everyone. This is Dr. Salcedo, your conscious gynecologist. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to be talking about sources of elevated insulin levels and chronic inflammation in women. So let's get started. First, I want to review that elevated insulin levels and inflammation in women is actually a normal process. However, when they become elevated and chronically elevated for long periods of time, that's when elevated insulin levels and inflammation can inflict damage onto a women's natural process. Elevated insulin levels impact women by suppressing the hypothalamic pituitary ovulatory axis. And that is just the fancy way for saying that elevated insulin levels over long periods of time will actually block ovulation. And that will lead to a hormone imbalance that we talk about as women. Elevated inflammation levels are just our body's reparative mechanism to actually cure or Im improve any damage that might be happening to the structure of our body. So one can think of elevated insulin levels and inflammation as two processes that impact women on the hormonal level and the structural level. It is the dysregulation of insulin levels and chronic inflammation that will definitely inflict its problems to women and our gynecologic cycle. So the purpose of this talk today is to teach you the 12 different processes that will impact women increase insulin levels, and elevate chronic levels of inflammation in our body. So the first thing that causes elevation in insulin and inflammation is carbohydrates. Elevations in carbohydrates or starches will cause secretion of our pancreas to increase in insulin levels. And those insulin levels will rise so that our body can take care of the carbohydrates and starches that we had just consumed. That's normal. However, elevations and chronic elevations in insulin level because of our carbohydrate consumption will impact our hypothalamic pituitary ovulatory access and suppress ovulation. Other factors that increase insulin and inflammation are hypertension, diabetes, overweight or obesity, or increases in our visceral adiposity, which is our fat that's around our belly. All of those things in different ways increase pro-inflammatory cytokines called interleukins and prostaglandins. Those in itself can damage the blood vessels that feed our organs. They also sometimes decrease our body's ability to protect itself by decreasing something called nitric oxide. Other things that cause elevations in insulin and chronic inflammation are poor or toxic relationships that are surrounding us, anxiety and depression, as well as things like trauma. Now, when someone has a poor relationship, whether relationships at work or um, poor work-life balance or toxic romantic relationships, those things will increase our cortisol levels, which end up through various processes, increasing body inflammation and insulin levels. The same thing happens with anxiety depression. Anxiety and depression will modulate and negatively impact the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access, which is our body's way of processing stress. When a patient or when a person is going through anxiety or depression, it will increase our cortisol levels, which is our stress hormones and that will dysregulate that hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access. Trauma is another source of body inflammation and elevation in insulin. When our body experiences trauma, our autonomic nervous system is activated. Our autonomic nervous system is the part of our nervous system that activates without us knowing it. It's our body's ability to protect itself. However, when we experience trauma and we're not able to discharge the energies that are related to trauma, that leads to elevations in glucose, as well as other stress hormones, and our body thinks that it's chronically under a stress. Other things that will elevate our insulin and our inflammatory molecules in our body are having low vitamins. 
Low vitamins can be low B12, low vitamin D3, and omega-3 fatty acids. These are all very potent anti-inflammatories that help our body regulate normal processes. However, when we're deficient in any of these things, our body can undergo a chronic stress. Other sources of chronic body inflammation and elevations in insulin include gluten and lectin intolerance. Gluten and lectin are found in certain plant-based proteins that will sometimes cause our body to undergo chronic inflammation because they have a hard time processing the skin in certain fruits and vegetables. This will lead our body to undergo chronic inflammation in order to process things and they can lead to bloat and feelings of fatigue and weakness after consuming certain meals. These will lead our body to feel like it's undergoing a chronic inflammation or a stress over several different meals. Finally, something to consider is our sleep quality. Not only the amount of hours of sleep that we get a day, but how we are actually sleeping when we're sleeping. And an important question to, to answer is if we are, have been ever been told that we snore, that can definitely negatively impact our body systems because when we are snoring, our body is not getting enough oxygen and that raises stress hormones as well. If we're not getting enough sleep between seven to eight hours a night, our body can be under chronic inflammation. As you can see, there are many different sources of elevations in insulin and body inflammation that can impact a woman's ability to have normal gynecologic processes. And it's really all about trying to figure out which one of these triggers is your source of elevations in insulin and inflammation. It's also important to notice that elevations in insulin can impact our hormonal cascades and elevations in chronic body inflammation can impact our body's ability to repair itself under chronic stress. So a hormonal problem and a structural problem are caused by all of these different sources of body inflammation and elevations in insulin. Those hormonal problems can lead to PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome. Those inflammatory problems can lead to uterine fibroids, endometrial polyps, endometriosis. So it's very important to realize that our body is experiencing lots of different sources of elevations in insulin and chronic inflammation. And as we are looking to improve our lifestyle as a whole, it's important to notice how each one of these players can impact our feminine health. We really just want you to understand the external sources that are leading to many different chronic insult sources in our body. And then we get to decide how we wanna treat them. Now here's the thing, everyone has a little bit of these different things, but it's, and it's important to not feel overwhelmed by trying to address each one of them all in one day. Remember, our approach to gynecologic health is really to understand our sources of body inflammation and then over time develop the different treatment strategies that will help us really improve our female processes as a whole. If you felt that this information was helpful, please send it to a friend. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.